Our last neurotype is kind of a weird animal in that it doesn't have a large dominance in the neurological element and doesn't have that much muscular dominance either. I mean, if we, if we have to, to look at both, the muscular component is stronger than, than the neural component, but it's still not very high. Uh, rather, their dominance really is more of a structural nature, tendons, ligaments. Uh, and skeleton. So basically, they, they want to protect their structure. That's why these guys are normally not naturally attracted to weightlifting and strength training in general. Uh, because th they don't need to feel that their nervous system is stimulated. They don't feel the need to have their muscles stimulated. So really, they will only look for weight training because they think they have to or, or just to feel good. But still, as a coach, you will have to work with these individuals who are more built for endurance activities. Uh, now, uh, the one word that describes that neurotype is control. They need to be in control. Uh, and that is true for training, but also for their life. I'm going to talk a bit about that later. Now, the one sentence that describes them is that building muscle is all about controlling stress. And by extension, also controlling uh, being in control. Uh, that's because these guys have the highest production of stress and the, the, the least efficient way of dealing with stressors in general. So that's why they tend to be very anxious by nature and worry about everything. Now, because of that, they are also amazingly good planners. They are great at creating plans, structures, and following them to a T to achieve a certain goal. When they have a precise structure to work with them, they are comfortable. So that's why, for example, if you're a coach and you have a client that's a type 3, that, then they will respond a lot better if you give them a training plan where they can see the next 6, 8, or even 12 weeks of training in advance. It's even better if you can actually plan the training weights a long time in advance uh, because they will be able to mentally prepare for it. And because they, they, they need to be in control, now knowing when they will be forced to add weight secures them. Now, I mentioned that the key word is control. So that's also true for their life. They, they need to follow a, strict, uh, a, a very strict structure. They need to feel that they are in control of themselves. When I say control, they don't need to control others. They need to feel in control of their own life. So they need no external influences. They need to follow a plan and just boom. Always follow the same uh, daily routine, eating at the same time, sleeping at the same time, watching the same TV, uh, TV shows, um, basically having the same conversation, same routine at work, training at the same time, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also from uh, a nutritional perspective, they are those who are at the most risk of becoming, uh, becoming anorectic or having anorectic uh, behaviors in that they might not be pure and erectic, but they will drastically limit their food intake. Why? Because anorexia or an anorectic eating pattern, which is not pure anorexia, it's just a pattern, uh, that is only a matter of control. Probably these people, uh, when they go like that far, like to anorexia, what happened is they had a traumatic event in their life where they felt that they lost control of their body. And they are looking for a way to regain control of it. And food deprivation is a, is a way to show or feel that you are controlling your body. My hunger does not control me. I control it. That's why they're also at risk of becoming uh, like those who are addicted to training like in a bad way. Like they will do like eight hours of cardio every day. And that is the same type of like, it's the same type of behavior as anorexia, it's just controlling the body. My body is telling me to stop, I'm telling my body to continue. That is the same type of behavior. Uh, anyway, I digress. But if you look at that control element and put it into training, 
they need to feel in control of an exercise, otherwise it creates anxiety. And if it creates anxiety, all the flexor muscles tighten up. It's a protective, uh, protective reflex that we learn to protect the internal organs. When you feel excessive anxiety, the first reaction is try to protect the internal organs. So the flexors will, will tense up to protect here. So, but that posture, try to squat that way. It's gonna squat like this, that doesn't work. So, so if they are overly anxious when training, then they will actually not be able to perform the movement properly. So they can't go down on a squat, they round the back on a deadlift, which creates even more anxiety. They will only be able to train really hard once they are fully in control and fully comfortable with an exercise. That's why these guys, not only do they not need variation, they should not have variation because for them, variation is a stress. These guys can stick to the same exercises for their whole life. Eventually, you will need to vary the sets, reps, rest intervals, or have techniques like slow tempo or pauses, but sticking to the same big basic lifts for a long time will give them better results because until they are fully comfortable and know that they are in control of the movement, they won't be able to train hard. Now, that's why when you look at how you plan the training, these guys should not have a lot of exercises in a workout. They should not use pairings. They should do all the sets of one exercise before moving on to the next because they can't focus on that one lift. They can do a lot of sets of each exercise. In fact, they need to do a lot of sets because they are built for endurance. But the way they do it is they do a lot of very gradually heavier warm-up sets. So for example, if I'm squatting and I'm gonna squat 300, then I might do like a set with 100, a set with 110, a set with 130, maybe doing like set seven to eight gradually heavier warm-up sets, and then do two or three work sets. They need to do about twice as much warm-up sets for the big lift as work sets because they won't be able to perform those work sets well until they feel comfortable. And each warm-up set get, get them more comfortable and more confident in their technique. So few exercises, not a lot of variation. Better to change uh, the training technique, then the exercises, so slower tempo, they respond very well to it. Pauses during the lift, they respond well to it because a pause forces them to control the body, control the weight. Uh, also, as a matter of progression, instead of adding weight, you can add pauses, you can reduce the rest intervals, but, but still keep the rest intervals fairly long uh, because they don't want to create too much anxiety. Now, one thing that works really well for them is having like three or four minutes between sets, but between sets, they will actually do mobility work. I normally don't recommend mobility work around training because it actually can, it can hurt performance, but these guys doing mobility work, even static stretching between sets will enhance their performance because it will decrease their perception of pain and they have an increased perception of pain. So, so that is the general aspect of the training of a type three. Again, these guys, you won't see a ton of them because they are not naturally attracted to strength training, but when you have them, that's how you should train them.